Any mom will tell you it is hard balancing work and life, right? So I FaceTime my kids every morning at the same time. And it's that moment too, I know for you as well, that helps propel you through the day. You know, you get you get that nice positive jolt of energy from your family. And when I'm telling the news and I'm telling the stories, I'm more compassionate, I'm more caring. I want my family to look back and say, he worked hard to provide for me. And I want my viewers to feel the same way. I want people to know that we're there to help give them the tools they need to make a positive difference in their lives and their community's life. A lot of people ask me, how do you do it? And I wouldn't be able to do it if I didn't do what I loved. When the lights go down, it's about knowing we made a positive difference and knowing that we help people. And I know that it is a responsibility of mine as a mother to make sure that I'm doing my job well. I'm a better journalist because I'm a mom. And I'm a better mom because of what I do at work. We are a movement by and for people affected by multiple sclerosis. Until we end this disease forever, we will do whatever it takes to accelerate breakthroughs. We believe that we are stronger together. That nobody should face MS alone. We will be by your side every step of your journey. From day one. partner through the challenges. Sharing ideas and finding solutions. We believe that people live better lives when they are understood and supported. It's hard to hear. But you look so good. When you feel anything but. Or to feel like MS is the only thing people see. We will be there for your loved ones so, so they, they can, can be, be there for you. you. We'll shine a light on what it means to live with MS. Till the rest of the world understands. We believe that everyone deserves affordable medications. A doctor who knows MS. And a healthcare system that puts you first. You should never have to choose between paying your bills and getting the care you need. We will make sure your voice is heard loud and clear. We'll be your champion from the halls of Congress to City Hall. We believe that you should be able to plan for the next 10 years. Even the next 10 minutes. Without MS getting in the way. Complex problems take many solutions. Coming together in just the right way. We'll be there to help you piece it all together. We'll work every day so you can get what you want from life. Even while living with this disease. We believe that no one else should have to face the fear and uncertainty of an MS diagnosis. And that those that have MS should get back what they've lost. Curing this disease takes a global effort. We will fund the most promising leads and gather the brightest minds to find a cure as fast as possible. We'll be unrelenting until the very end. We believe. We believe. We believe that we all have something to contribute. Whether it's time, money, connections, or sheer passion. There is strength, strength in numbers. We're calling on you to join us. Join us. Join us. Find your place in this movement. We need you. We need you. We need you. Together, we will create a world free of MS. to our first ever dinner of champions drive in. I am Brian Badgett and I am proud to be back for my third term serving as the host for tonight's event. And as we all know, the third film in the series is usually the best, or at least pretty good. Thank you for being here with us. My wife, Rachel Badgett, was diagnosed with MS in 1993. She and I have been living with MS for nearly 20 years together. Most of the time, we kept it a secret from everyone except our family and closest friends. About five years ago, Rachel chose to let the world know, and the Northwest chapter of the National MS Society, and Lori Johnson in particular, have been an integral part of our journey during these last five years. It is my great honor to give back just a bit by helping to host this evening's event. And what a fun and exciting event it's going to be. I have seen some neon colors out there. I have seen spandex that I haven't seen since the 1990s. And in a good way, definitely a good way. I've seen folks having a great time and it's been wonderful so far. And let's keep that momentum rolling. So, first things first. Thank you to Tim Wilson, for the amazing acoustic set. 
Can you believe the good fortune to have Ivan and Alyosha, frontman, Tim Wilson, live tonight? Fantastic. Thanks, too, has to go to our courageous and creative planning committee for this ingenious evening. Thank you, Eric, Michael, Mariko, Ellie, Nikki, and Estelle, and our absolutely fearless, dedicated, yes, there it is, the tip from love, that's what I'm talking about, absolutely fearless, absolutely dedicated planning committee chairwoman, Maria Mills, are you in the house? There it is. There it is. And what a night we have planned. I, for one, am absolutely thrilled that we are in person tonight. I've been cruising around, rubbing some elbows, wearing this amazing suit. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. This amazing set beats a ballroom right now, and we've curated this night to celebrate safety the amazing resilience of the MS movement, and the spirit of our community. So, settle in with your popcorn and your candy. It's time for some previews. 2021 marks 75 years of progress for the National MS Society, and the determination, grit, and creative ingenuity that brought you Neon Nights tonight is reflective of the strength and determination the MS Society has demonstrated since 1946. It's clear, innovation is at our core. And we don't need to go back in time, back in time, to see all the progress that's been made. In fact, together, we've achieved more breakthroughs for MS than the world has seen for any other neurological disease. The National MS Society paved the way for nearly all of the treatment options available today, none of which existed just 30 years ago. And the next chapter of our story could be the last chapter for MS. We can be the generation that ends the disease and changes lives of millions of people. Our progress is accelerating faster than the 88 miles per hour it takes to activate the flux capacitor on a DeLorean time machine. Yeah, baby. We've achieved more in the past five years than in the 70 previous, and it will take all of us to continue this momentum. You play a critical part. Tonight, you can end MS by going on a trip to the Caribbean. How about that? Or Panama. Go on a trip to Mazama for a week to help end MS. These vacations and more are up for bid in our auction tonight. And every dollar you spend moves us closer to a world free of MS. There are flights of wine, skydiving, and a chef's dinner from Mitch Mayer's of Soy. All here, available to you. After this past year, you deserve to treat yourself. And if treating yourself also supports the National MS Society, that's a win win. The auction closes at midnight. So bid quickly and bid often. Tonight's a bit different. You don't have a paper bid card, but you don't need one. You have a pom pom and you have a cell phone. And we need you to be generous and light up the night with your flashing car lights and sparkling bonbons. If you are not already, you can get registered by texting DOC Seattle 2021 to 76278. That should be up on your screen right now. DOC Seattle 2021. Text that to 76278 if you haven't already. This is how you bid on auction items. Donate. It's how you buy a golden ticket. More on that later. You'll need a credit card. You don't need a credit card to ride this train, but you do need a credit card to bid tonight. And your address, and then you're going to get going. So, pull out those cell phones, and can you give me a little honk of that horn? Can you let me hear that horn? If you're getting registered now, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you. Love it. So you won't want to miss out on 
the golden tickets auction this year. Just 22 tickets left. There's only 22 tickets left. And I'm going to show you how to buy yours here in a, in a few minutes. There's only 100 total. So we're on the tail end of your opportunity to participate in this golden ticket auction this year. In honor of the 75th birthday of the National MS Society, we're selling tickets for our Golden Circle gift for just $75. There are only 100 of these precious tickets available, and these tickets are your opportunity to take home a very rare bottle of Screaming Eagle Cabernet Sauvignon, a 1999 vintage. Now, for those of you who may be unfamiliar, like I was, this wine is very hard to get, and it retails for about $3,400 a bottle. Screaming Eagle is famous for its carefully crafted, limited edition wines. You have to sign up to be on a waiting list just to be invited to purchase the wine. And the waiting list can be years long. You've probably seen some fabulous people walking around with some incredibly stylish blinky rings. And you may have asked yourself, how do I get in on that action? It's not too late. Act now. Show our staff that you purchased a golden ticket and they will gift you a blinky ring. Those blinky rings are amazing and they really do tie the neon lights on the together. Our staff is available to help you and you can also purchase from the website. Look for item number 131 and grab one of these precious golden tickets and a leaky ring while they last. We are only selling 100 of these and there are only 22 left. So you have much better odds than getting lightning to strike a DeLorean with 1.21 gigawatts. I'm going to get one right now. I'm going to talk to you Here we go. Ring on my phone. Oh, let's see, this worked well in pre-production. Uh, I'm right here, there's my phone, phone. I'm right here at the screening, here, let's go to the back one, view list. This is your uh, your load screen. Boom, rear view of technical difficulties. Gotta love them, gotta love them. All right, I'm just gonna pretend. So you open up your app, here is the 1999 Screaming Eagle raffle. One for 75, and requiring quantity below, one, five, and all set, boom. I got a chance, do you? I don't even know what I'd do with this amazing amount of wine. Would I like, wait for the president to come over and drink it with him? Or uh, maybe I'll just finish it tonight after we're done. That sounds fun, let's get some paper cups. Let's do this, uh, let's do this like Paul Giamatti style. Awesome, we'll just drink it, we got a paper cup, have a good time. Celebrate ending MS together. You can purchase a golden ticket just like I do. Text DOCCI 2021 to 76278 to get started. I am thrilled to share that. Thanks to the generosity of our sponsors, every gift you make tonight for auction items or donations will directly support the programs, services, and research of the National NS Society. So, let's thank our generous sponsors. Our advocate sponsor is K5. Thank you to our innovators, Color Creative, Virginia Mason Franciscan Health, West Scott Bay Selfish, Shellfish, First Choice Health, and Arizona, I think you've heard of them. And thank you to our mission sponsors, Audi Seattle, University Volkswagen, and University Audi Linwood. The Escapes Group at the Republic National Distributing Company, and KDMG. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your generosity making tonight be purely about raising money that goes directly to assisting the National MS Society achieve their vision, our vision. When you think about what you can give tonight, I want you to think about what it would feel, what it would feel like if your gift was instantly done. Feels good, right? I am 
very excited to announce that tonight, you can double your impact thanks to a very generous donor. That's the kind of double feature I'm talking about. Two donors have pledged a challenge gift of $75,000 to mark this, our 75th year, as the National MS Society. If we, collectively, tonight, we can raise $75,000 tonight, we'll unlock another $75,000 from them. That means if you donate $250, it's done. $500 goes for its people living in a mess. So please, make sure you are registered to give, because we're going to meet that challenge and unlock that extra $75,000. We're going to do it together. Can I get some more talking? Letting us know that we're going to meet that? That's what I'm talking about. Oh. Every dollar you give will count as two. Okay. Now, on to our featured presentation. It is my pleasure to introduce to you, my friend, the president of the Greater Northwest Chapter of the National MS Society, Lori Johnson. Are you ready? Let's do it. Oh, we're going to do it. Socially distanced. I didn't breathe. You didn't breathe. I'm mostly vaccinated. All right. Hi. 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 Oh, my gosh. Hi, everybody. Hey. You know, Oh, I hear you. I hear you in the car I need that. <laughs> and you must be able to hear me, even though I was told to tell you that if you can't hear me from your car, you should tune your radio to 89.7 FM. I remember, Kristen. I'm winning. <laughs> I think one of the hardest things to do during this time has been to answer the question, how are you? And so I just thought I would start tonight in telling you how I'm feeling. I'm feeling relieved. I'm so relieved that we're all here safely, that the weather is perfect, that people are getting vaccinated, that the CDC says we can take our masks off, and my God, we're going to be allowed to hug each other. Actually, I'm already breaking that rule. I've been hugging so many people, and I've missed that so much. I am relieved, and I'm, I'm sad. And I don't need to recount for you that what we've been through in this last year, the loss and the anger and the fear, and I, I don't need to recount for you that MS didn't take a break and wait for us to catch our breath during this time. Somebody got diagnosed with MS in the hospital and she was alone because it wasn't safe for her loved ones to be with her. And another family had to make the difficult decision to move their dad, their husband, away from his home because he could no longer be cared for there. And nobody can visit because of the pandemic. So I'm sad. And I'm proud. MS didn't stop, but neither did we. The MS movement in the greater Northwest is strong, and we've proved it over and over again in the last 12 months. I want to hear the horns for that. <laughs> Somebody in the last 12 months came out about his MS and disclosed to his workplace for the very first time about his disease. And somebody else bought their insurance company for coverage, and she won. I'm proud of all of you who have been showing up, even when it's hard. So I'm feeling so proud. And I feel totally disoriented. I'm not used to leaving my house. I don't know what I'm supposed to take with me. The calendar above my desk still says March 2020. I've not been around this many people in a long time. I have members of my staff at the Greater Northwest Chapter that I met in person for the first time today. So I'm disoriented. <laughs> and I feel hopeful. We made so much progress since the last time I saw you. Somebody completed their clinical fellowship 
and launched their own MS practice. And somebody else discovered a new pathway to myelin repair. And there's a clinical trial underway right now for an oral therapy for progressive MS. So I feel so hopeful. We're having our first in-person fundraiser since October 2019, so I also feel excited. I'm excited to share this special evening with all of you, and I feel this immense heart swelling, might ball my eyes out, gratitude for the staff that's helped put on this event for my team, my team, Kristen, and all of you. They're the most amazing human beings that make up your multiple sclerosis society. If you see them, please say thank you. They've worked so hard to keep us going this year. And I'm super grateful for the generosity of our amazing board of trustees who kept me going and us going for their gifts of time and talent, and for the hundreds of volunteers who stayed with us during this time when we couldn't give you a role to play. But you're here tonight and playing a role. And I'm so grateful for you. Rita, Aaron, Ellie, Michael, Estelle, and Rico, thank you for tonight. And Brian, I am especially feeling delighted by that suit. Wow. <laughs> it's the suit. I'm so happy to share the stage with you. I'm so happy to see you in person, my dear friend. And I'm, I'm just happy. And when I see you out there in the world, I want to know how you're feeling. And I really want to know. Cool. That's what I got. That's beautiful. Thank you. I love you. I'm feeling loved. And I love you. Well, I mean, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Tonight, it's going to be great. Tonight continues to be great. For 19 years, the National MS Society has presented the Spirit Award. In 2017, my lovely wife, Rachel Padgett, who right now is lounging in the back where I still her out a pickup truck in this air mattress glory. It's fantastic. We made this whole like drive-in mess because her bedtime is 8.30. I hope she's awake to hear this. It's fantastic. So she received the Spirit Award in 2017. And it was my honor to be the one who presented it to her. We also have other past honorees with us tonight. Please give a honk and a wave for Erin Ewing. There she is. Yeah, there's a very uh, sweet, sweet party bus uh, that I saw her hanging out around. So I know she's there. Rachel Padgett, are you awake? Because hello, let's get some horn hogs for her. Thank you. And Andy Myers, how you doing? Hang out and honk for Andy Myers. So real quick, I just also want to say, this is, a, this is one of those bleeding rings I was talking about. And if you have not bought your golden ticket, see how it really just completes the look? I'm just saying. I mean, the blinking ring alone is worth the donation, and it's doubled for the National MS Society. So get yourself that golden ticket if you haven't already. We have several other prior Spirit Award winners also who are watching from home. Jim O'Donnell, I know you're out there. We got the family of Buster Albert, Benny Hurdy, Julie Gould, Jim Johnson, and Liz Hilton. The Spirit Award is presented to someone who lives with MS and who encourages people around them with their resilience, their spirit, their strength, and their courage. To introduce tonight's Spirit Award honoree to all of you, is that honoree's brother, David Schiller. Good evening. What a night. The day is here. Your car is packed. You're on the road for an amazing road trip. The GPS says clear roads ahead and you know exactly when you're going to arrive. But wait. Suddenly, with no warning, the GPS states 
recalculating route. Your one certain on-time arrival, despite all your planning, is now in question. About 15 years ago, tonight's honoree was faced with a similar circumstance. His incredible life, filled with a loving wife, kids, friends, athletic prowess, a successful career and ongoing aspirations, was perfectly on track when he was diagnosed with MS. What would he do? Feel sorry for himself? No. Blame others, perhaps? No. Isolate himself? Not that either. Instead, drawing on his strong family and circle of friends, he recalculated his route. He pushed himself to grow, adapt, and continue his journey. One example of this recalculation was basketball. His once quick crossover move and drive to the basket was gone. But basketball wasn't. His route changed. He moved to wheelchair basketball. He struggled at first, but grew quickly and played with the local team and even traveled to Israel to represent the United States at the Maccabee Games. But our honoree had one other major change to his route. He quickly decided that building support for the MS Society was critical. Now when we pause, there was an early state where he thought MS Society stood for Mike Schiller, and we went through that, he understands now. <laughs> he established a team that had well over 100 members for Walk MS, and raised a lot of money. He had bingo events, a carnival to raise money and awareness. And he is also there with his time to support others who are faced with that unexpected need to recalculate their route when being diagnosed with MS. Our honoree, through his effort and the support of his immense circle, has helped raise in the hundreds of thousands of dollars for the MS Society. He is a committed family man who challenges himself every day to make the world a better place. MS will not get in the way of that. Yes, he's heading towards his destination, and despite the fact his route needed to be recalculated by MS, he is well on his way. How do I know this? Why am I so impressed with his journey? Because this year's Dinner of Champions honoree is not only an amazing person, he happens to be my brother. So would you please put your hands together or put your hand on those horns, I, my pleasure to introduce this year's Dinner of Champions honoree, my brother, Mike Schiller. I just saw him. I'll go get it. All right, just let's give us a second. We're going to figure this out. We're going to figure this out. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, Mike, you got this. You have got this. Okay, we got it. Let's see. Thanks for honoring us and all our fundraising efforts. Uh, MS Society provides educational materials. And, uh, MS Society provides emotional support, uh, diet and exercise programs, wellness strategies. Yeah, Mr. Schiller, we're ready for you. Okay. Okay, you got this. You got this. <laughs> MS Society is strategic and supportive. MS Society is strategic and supportive. MS Society is strategic and supportive. Thank you. 
especially that it was not on the agenda or the schedule, but uh, I appreciate having my brother uh, share, share that. Um, I appreciate also a few minutes to talk with you. Disability doesn't discriminate. Disability, injury, sickness, doesn't, it doesn't matter your race, religion, social class, age. You won't see it coming. I definitely know that I did. For a reason that's still foreign to me, as this year's honoree, it is my story that was chosen to be shared with all of you tonight. Probably similar to many of you, I had a very active lifestyle. Basketball and sports in general played a big role in my life. In addition to sports, I enjoyed fishing, camping, hiking, and a number of other activities. 15 years ago, I was diagnosed with MS. Although I was happy to at least get some semblance of an explanation as to what was going on, it didn't make the pill any easier to swallow. I had very little understanding of this disease that made the diagnosis even harder for me. The long-term prognosis was completely uncertain. As we know, MS can affect everyone a little bit differently. As it turns out, I have progressive MS, which now has made me put me in a wheelchair for a majority of the time. When I was first diagnosed, I was depressed. You wouldn't be. I was down. I had no idea what the future held for me. I asked myself that proverbial question, why me? It was a hard and challenging time in my life. But fortunately, I was surrounded by amazing friends and family that were there to not only support me, but to also remind me of the mantra that I had always lived by and shared with so many. Life is filled with obstacles, and it's how we overcome those obstacles that truly define who we are. What I started to remember was that we all face adversity every day of our lives. Whether it's personal tragedy, career hurdles, or family trauma, we're all measured in how we overcome these obstacles. So I made a conscious decision to use my personal optimism and leadership skills to not only take this head on, but to make a difference for others who may also be struggling with similar life-changing obstacles, whether it be MS or something else. Fortunately, when I had so many questions about this crazy disease, it was the MS Society that was there to help me navigate and find some answers. They were readily available to provide the resources and support I needed. Utilizing these tools, I was inspired to get involved in the MS Society. I learned there was a walk, and I immediately created Team Schiller. Year after year, my team was one of the largest and always one of the top fundraising teams. But as walking became more and more difficult, even for short distances, I decided to find a different way to bring people together to raise funds. So we began a bingo event and an auction event and continue to raise money for the MS Society. For the past 15 years, my family and I have actually been involved in fundraising for the MS Society. We've walked, run bingo events, and for the past several years, my brother David, who you just met, does his own annual free throws for MS event where he makes a thousand free throws just to raise money for the MS Society. A thousand free throws, and guess what? He shoots it at about 80%, which is good because it makes the time move a little bit faster. I, asserted, I decided early on that instead of burying my head in the sand and feeling sorry for myself, I was going to overcome this obstacle and inspire others to do the same with their own personal struggles. Now I can go on and on and tell you about all the opportunities the MS Society has given me, but Kristen has limited me to 15 minutes and, what? Oh, sorry, I only get five minutes. So I better get to the point. Simply put, the MS Society is there to support a whole community of individuals struggling with this affliction. The MS Society is here to provide services to those who need them. Educational materials, emotional support, diet and exercise suggestions, wellness strategies, support for family and loved ones, and so much more. Being involved with the MS Society is a great way to improve the overall health of your community by promoting meaningful activities, enabling positive social interactions, and helping people develop valuable life skills. As I said before, disability doesn't discriminate. It can happen to anyone at any time. 
you never really know when you might need an organization like the Honor Society. And that's why when the time comes this evening to reach in your pockets and give, find it in your hearts to dig as deep as you can. The Emma Society was not only really there for me when I needed some answers, it helped me realize I was not alone. I had a whole community there to support me. The Emma Society gives us all hope that no one ever needs to feel left out or left behind. Now I said at the beginning of this that I didn't know why the Emma Society chose my story to be shared with all of you. But I think I get it. I could have been sitting in any of your cars watching from home right where you are right now. I had never even considered the possibility of, dis of, uh, the possibility of disability. That was confusing. My story is special because there's nothing all that special about it. All of us have obstacles that we need to overcome. It's important for all of us to do everything necessary to overcome these obstacles. Thank you all so much for giving me this opportunity to share my story with you and making me this evening honorary. Please do whatever you can do to help support this amazing program. Thank you. Thank you. I unexpected. I appreciate it. Thank you, David. And thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Am I moving on? I think so. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, thank you, Mike. Thank you. That was a, a good reminder about how MS can affect anyone at any time. Doesn't tell us when it's coming. Doesn't tell us what it's doing. Doesn't even tell us it's there. But once you know it's there, you don't know what it's going to do. It's one of the reasons we're all here tonight, collectively, to try to put an end, to do our part to put an end to multiple sclerosis. In the United States, nearly one million people live with MS. There's somebody's brother, mother, sister, husband, daughter, somebody's best friend. We're all a part of the MS movement because we're either someone with MS or we love someone with MS. Everyone's story about loving someone living with MS is different. So we partnered with Color to ask a few of them, what's that like? Um, let's see. I can prop the back. Should be. You both look great. We're recording. Perfect. So my best friend. Other ones, bubbles. No, that's not gonna work. Good. Um, my. Let me start. Okay. It was the uh, the week before she was graduated from college. It was when she was pregnant with her third child. It was at the same time as starting a new job. Ellie was out of town and called me to say that he woke up and he was supposed to fly home and he couldn't see out of one eye. And we're like, well, when do you need to, you need to go yeah. to the clinic? That sounds odd. He called us in and sat us down and, and pretty much just said straight up, you know, you have MS. To us, we were hearing our dad's really sick, right? Like that's that's what we were hearing and understanding. It was, it was difficult because I, at first I didn't know what it was. I thought it was something that you died from. Me, I was um, a wreck. It's hard seeing someone uh, you care about go through this. I didn't know what the future looked like. I didn't know if I could do anything to help. It just, it just scared me to death, you know. And everybody scrambled to try and get a better handle on what it was. God, what, what can anybody do? This is, it's terrible. Well, I would say it's not the end of the world. We're gonna figure this thing out, whatever it is, whatever it looks like. This isn't gonna bother me or defeat me or do anything. I have to keep moving. I have to work out, I have to run, I have to get involved. Instead of worrying about the things that you can't do, you realize all the things you can do. She immediately became a weightlifter. She 
has joined the board. Double major out of Rice University, one of the best universities. This girl is it. Sharon doesn't let MS define her. She takes this um, diagnosis and then she's now using it to help other people. Aside from being a mother, you know, the, you know being an advocate for those with MS is really, uh, really her mission. The best thing you can do is um, get informed. MS is one of those diseases that's unseen. One day a lesion can appear here and it'll cause this kind of damage and you can appear somewhere else and not do anything at all. You just, you don't know. I think that uh, folks with MS, they're just uh, uh, normal people. My dad didn't change as a person because of his MS. And if anything, it made him stronger. She's like the, the best person in the world I know. Even if, even if she wasn't my daughter, I would think that. There's a spark. There's just a spark. And I don't know how other, any, how else to put it. She inspires me every day. There's kind of this ease about her and you just instantly feel comfortable and like you can be yourself. I laugh so much more since I've been with her than I have probably every year prior to my whole life. Gil, you are daily an inspiration to me and I love you. So there's so many people that uh, are next to you that may have MS, but you, you don't know that. My husband, my dad. Daughter, Wendy. My wife, Ashley. My best friend. My very good friend. My wife, Sharon. My mom has MS. Which, by the way, originally, fun fact, uh, though they wanted originally Michael J. Fox, was unavailable because of commitments with family ties. So they originally started and filmed for seven weeks with Eric Stoltz. Completely different movie, much darker tone. Yeah, anyway, you guys tonight who get to watch Back to the Future are not the only ones who have the opportunity to get this golden ticket. Albeit, you won't be able to get a blinky ring, but you can still purchase a golden ticket. You get out that phone, you go on the app, and you have 75 bucks, boom. You've got a one in a hundred chance of winning this amazing bottle of wine. Again, 15 tickets, doubled that donation as well. So $75 becomes that $150 donation. It's, it's a fantastic opportunity. Whether you win, whether you lose, you're gonna feel good. And don't you wanna feel good? Come on, I know I've got my mom and my stepdad down in Monterey, California, watching this from old leader dog named Jack. Come on, you guys. Get yourself a little ticket. Call me out. I'm calling you out. All right. Lori, we have one more speaker today, don't we? We do. Tell us about Sharon Dodge. Well, when I think of the National MS Society, I think of family. And this certainly isn't a family that you want to become a part of. And you could try to go alone on your MS journey, but it's a heck of a lot easier and it's a lot more fun to muster your courage and join us. And so when I think of the family at the National MS Society, and particularly, oh, apparently you couldn't hear me the other night. 
particularly when I think of the family that I've grown to love at the National MS Society. Sherry Dodge is one of the first sisters that comes to my mind. And once you meet her, you'll never want to let her go. She'll be your sister too, so just see for yourself. Aloha from Hawaii. I'm Sharon Dodge, and I've been a Bike MS Team Captain of Team Navy for the past 15 years. First, I would like to congratulate Mike Schiller on this incredible honor. We need more leaders like you, Mike, who teach and inspire others to not be limited by their handicaps or illnesses. MS has never cut you or me any breaks, and it is truly an honor to be sharing this virtual stage with you here tonight. Now I wanna take a few minutes to share some of my MS journey with you. I've spoken many times about MS in many different formats, but this is truly the first time I'm able to do so from the comfort of my home here in Hawaii. So I was just a kid when I first heard the words multiple sclerosis. It was a warm spring day in Maryland when my dad sat me down and tried to explain why he, as an airline pilot for American Airlines, was having weird vision problems. My dad had also been a jet pilot in the Navy and he was sharp as a tack, so all of these changes were very confusing. He was an athlete, he was strong, he was my rock. MS was not kind to my father at all. And here's where it gets a little bit tricky. For years I've talked about my dad and told his story, but I've always left one part out. I'm going to attempt to share with this with you here tonight. You see, it was only eight years after my dad passed away that I too was diagnosed with MS. It was my 30th birthday and we were living an incredible life in Southern Spain where my husband was also a naval aviator. I had already lived through MS once as my father's daughter. I watched him fight and then slowly give in to it. And here's the tricky part. This is really hard for me to say, but I literally watched my dad give up hope. We buried him when he was only 48 years old. Now here I was a young mom to a two year old little boy being told I had the exact same disease. I cannot begin to explain my fear. It was traumatizing and numbing all at the same time. I went through several stages of accepting this disease. The first of course is always the denial. How can this even be possible? MS is not a genetic disease. And then silence came. I said to my husband, let's not say anything to anyone until we can truly grasp this ourselves. I don't want people's pity. I cannot stand people feeling sorry for me. And then there's the grief. This cannot be my life. What if I die like my dad did? And then anger comes. Why me? This cannot be happening. You have got to be kidding me. And then slowly over a span of six months or so, I started to open up because I began to realize I could do more good by sharing than by being silent. And this is the exact moment that I contacted the National MS Society. I have now been living with MS for 25 years. This actually shocked me when I did the math because I don't keep track of it. People say to me all the time, you're such a fighter, you got this. You look so good. But let me tell you, there are so many moments when I don't feel like fighting and when I don't feel like I've got this. This past year, 10 days before Christmas, I was diagnosed with a stage two malignant tumor called hydrodenocarcinoma. It was just a small bump on my wrist. How did a small bump become the C word? I felt like I was going through the same stages that I went through when I was diagnosed with MS. I felt like I had been hit by a Mack truck. I couldn't breathe. The denial came. Of course, how can this possibly be true? Cancer, we literally have zero cancer in my family. Not only did I demand a second opinion, I asked for a third and a fourth one too, and I got them. And then there was the silence. Let's not tell anyone anything, especially just before Christmas, not even our family. Oh, and did I mention I cannot stand people feeling sorry for me? And then the grief. Less than 30% survived this rare type of tumor five years after surgery to remove it. What if I die? What if I don't get to meet my grandchildren? And then I got angry. Don't I have enough to deal with? Why me? You have got to be kidding me. And then there it was again. I slowly started to open up and we began to share with family and friends. 
Unfortunately, this cancer and three surgeries in three months were simply too much for my MS to handle, handle and I had a full-blown MS exacerbation that started just before my last surgery that made me go numb from my waist down to my feet. It's been almost four months now of pushing through and trying to keep my body moving while still fighting cancer and going through six weeks of radiation therapy, but I'm slowly coming out of the worst MS attack I've had in all of my 25 years with this disease. I tell you all of this here tonight because I had a small epiphany recently. I realized how fortunate I was to have already gone through my MS diagnosis because there's so many things I learned. I learned how to fight like hell. I learned how to never give up hope. And I've learned to never stop moving, much to the chagrin of my oncologist. I've learned to trust the process. Man, I still hate those three words. So now more than ever, we need to amp up our support, our support for our National MS Society, but particularly the Greater Northwest Chapter because these are my people. They're the ones who never stopped asking, what do you need, Sharon? What can we do to help you? They are the ones who support the MS Center at Swedish, where I have been so fortunate to benefit from telehealth with my MS neurologist who has walked beside me virtually throughout my cancer diagnosis and this MS attack on my body. And they are the ones who continue to push forward with Walk MS and my absolute favorite, Bike MS. What a crash course they had last year, converting all of these events to virtual ones. And now this year, trying to pull together walk and bike while we're still trying to crawl out of this pandemic. And look what they have done here tonight. Is this not an incredible drive-in virtual dinner of champions? I so wish I could be there with you in person. And here's another reason. Remember when I told you about my, how my dad lost hope? I have never talked about this before in public because it's not an easy thing to talk about. How your father literally gave up on living how he left his family and he wasn't there to walk me down the aisle at my wedding or meet his three amazing grandchildren. You see the difference between my dad's MS and my MS are like night and day. I've had the resources and support that he didn't have from the National MS Society. There were literally zero disease modifying therapies out there for him. And today I've lost count of how many options are out there for the newly diagnosed. And all of this happened because of people like you People who give a damn whether you're directly affected by this pig sucking scum of a disease or not. We have come so far, we cannot give up now. Now more than ever, we have to make sure another generation of someone's family never hears those words, you have MS. So let's open those virtual wallets, people. Do it for the Walt Rogers of the world. Do it for his daughter. Do it for our very own staff member, Adriana who is a brand new mom herself, just heard those words. Do it for her dad, whose heart broke when his daughter told him she has the same disease that he has suffered through for so many years. Do it for all the fighters out there. Thank you so much for being here. Now the giving can begin. And let's not be shy, people. We can only do this if we work together. Aloha. We can only do this if we work together. Listen to those comments. Super excited. Super excited. I just Guys, here's what we're going to do. We are, again, like I said, we don't have the traditional big cards. We don't need the traditional big cards. We instead have some forms. We got people at home. We got all these things. So let's just start this big. Let's keep it going. Let's listen to Sharon's call to action. We're all here for a reason. We're not, it's not just about saving the day, saving 2035 years of age of our future. We are here to support the MS. So let's start. And that, well, let's first start with my thinking and my challenge donors. Yes. Our anonymous donors. One who gave a gift of fifty thousand, and another who gave a gift of twenty-five thousand dollars to match your donations tonight. Let's so let's get away. Let's match it. Right? I feel like we could start with twenty-five. What if there's somebody out there tonight that could do twenty-five? Twenty-five thousand dollars. Twenty-five thousand dollars. I think I just do heard a horn. Is go. there? A, okay, are there a couple more? I saw you go. Twenty-five. Coming down the right now. 
but I want to hear your horn, Brad Larson. Thank you so much for your gift. I saw your name come up on the leaderboard. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, thank you. I want to call out Jenny Rizzo. I want to call out Meredith Lee. I love you, ladies. I love you. Lisa Beetle. Oh, I saw Lisa Beetle. Lisa Beetle, you have a horn in that party bus. I love you, lady. I love you. Thank you. I just saw Michael Ewing. Talk thousand bucks. Thank you. Yes. You can thank Michael Ewing for all the wine you're drinking tonight, too. As soon as I get started drinking out of wine, I will. I am. And speaking of wine. Yes. What if we could drink a really nice bottle of wine? Let's find out who wins. I think we should find out who wins. I've got a golden ticket. I've got a golden ticket. I've got a golden ticket. Anyway, so this is not the one we're watching tonight. We're not watching the one we're watching. No, what did we talk about? We did. But we said about Back to the Future, which is a little less dark. Won't fall. Definitely a little bit dark. Anyway, I've got a golden ticket. She's got a golden ticket. Since we both have golden tickets, we're not going to talk. That's not going to have changed. You're going to get out of here. Come join us. Give it a little Yeah, give it a little Can we see it? Yes, the Can we see it? Here we go. There it is. Okay, there it is. Okay. This was really legit. If my name's on here, you can't be mad. It's not mine. Katie Biscone. Oh, so she's here. That is amazing. Katie, you better come up here. Because we've got a really fancy bottle of wine for you. I'm thirsty. And I'm oh, super oh, thirsty. Yeah. Who brought the corkscrew? Oh, I can do it. I can do it. I'll help you open it, Carrie. Oh, the good one. All right, we are super close to our seven two thousand seven hundred fifty dollars Oh, you guys, we just need like two hundred fifty dollars more. We yeah, you haven't given two hundred fifty bucks. Two hundred fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. I'll take fifty. I'll take fifty. Every little bit. If we can get there, that's as long as we can. If you're alive, and, and you've been watching this whole time, and maybe you already have been. Yes, somebody here, we're at 7334, 73,400 dollars more. And this is why I think it's 25 dollars. Thank you. Somebody just put it at 25 dollars. That's brilliant. That's exactly what you need. Small steps for big results, just like our progress with NEMS. It doesn't have to be a
unorthodox, super fun, super exciting environment to, to spend some time with us tonight, but to give you time, to give generously dollars and cents that we're really looking for to finding and this film is. And we do want to remind everybody yes. that the auction is still going. Yes. So you have until midnight to try to get the Panama trip from me. Oh. So I'm just Are throwing that a We might be going to Panama. Oh, yeah. It's three Hey, look, great job. Yeah. Well, that my dad was born in there. Yeah. So the auction is open until midnight. Midnight. So go ahead and check where you are on your auction app. And uh, of course, you know, donations open 24 hours. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you would like me to, yes. That's who that is. $77,000. Yeah. $77,000. Yeah. 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 Next year, actually in person for me. In person, person. Yeah, yeah. But maybe, I don't know. I don't know what it will look like, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Awesome.